Hello, I'm Ted Nyquist with the Midwest Chapter of the American Rhododendron Society. Today I'm going to talk about watering your rhododendrons and azaleas. You've just gone to great lengths to prepare your beds which exhibit both a low pH and excellent drainage. These plants require a consistent supply of water. By that I mean you don't want your plants to dry out and you don't want to overwater either, which would result in, so in your roots sitting in soil that borders on being soggy. The water you use likely will come from a well or a municipal supply system. I suggest you wa have your water tested to determine its pH, chemical makeup, and particularly including alkalinity. Under ideal situations, you could lower the pH of your water by adding sulfuric acid. In reality, most homeowners and a number of nurseries do not do this, partly because it requires a more elaborate watering setup in order to accurately dilute and inject the acid into the water system. Also, the use of sulfuric acid requires special safety equipment and precautions in order to handle it properly. Having said this, a number of nurseries growing rhododendrons and azaleas do utilize sulfuric acid and use it successfully to optimize the growing conditions for their plants. And the plants do look wonderful. An alternative approach would be to monitor the pH of the soil and add the appropriate amount of elemental sulfur and or ironite once a year in the spring. This is what I do. I add about two pounds of elemental sulfur per 100 square feet to keep the pH low. If you have just a few plants, you can water them with a hose as needed. Or if one is just a little bit dried out, you can kind of spot water it. If you have numerous plants in large beds, you will need a more extensive system, either using a drip line irrigation system or an overhead sprinkler. Either will work. I personally use overhead sprinklers. Not because they're better, but just that's what I have available. Just make sure all the plants receive adequate moisture on a timely place basis. Please do not overwater. In extremely hot weather, you'll need to water more frequently, even perhaps once a day. And of course, less if it has recently rained. I trust I've answered all your questions on watering your rhododendrons and azalea. Happy successful gardening. I wanted to summarize some of the points I made during this lesson on watering your rhododendrons and azaleas. First, you'll need to determine the type of water you're going to use in its source, whether it's from a well or a municipal system. Also, you need to determine the type of watering system, the pipes, hoses, etc., whether that's going to be a hose, drip, or a sprinkler system. And if you're going to add sulfuric acid, make sure that that system will withstand the amount and the type of acid you're going to add. Also, analyze the pH, alkalinity, and chemical composition. Alkalinity will have a, play a large factor in the amount of acid that you will need to add to your water. If you're going to inject sulfuric acid into your watering system, you will need to avail yourself of the related acid-resistant containers pumps, and metering systems to handle the acid. You'll also need to carefully calculate the proper amount of acid to add and the rate of addition. Also, you'll need to determine the proper safety procedures and equipment that must be utilized. Remember, sulfuric acid is highly corrosive, and if you get it on yourself, you need to start flushing the area immediately and then seek medical attention. If you decide not to use sulfuric acid, I recommend measuring the pH of your soil in the spring 
to see if a pH adjustment is necessary, and if so, add about 2 pounds of agricultural sulfur pellets per 100 square feet around the drip line of the rhododendrons. I then carefully rake the sulfur into the top inch or so of soil, being sure not to damage the roots of the plants. This works well for me, but your situation may vary depending on your water source and soil conditions, and if so, adjust the procedure accordingly. Happy gardening and enjoy your plants. The following photos were taken from our garden last spring.